So thank you. Um, as many of you know, in the structure of GTFCC, uh, there is a steering committee. Um, and the steering committee does have a chairperson, mm -hmm. uh, Fru Benson, uh, who was not able to be here today. Uh, so I was um, able to uh, try to uh, substitute for Fru as a chairperson today in uh, the meeting that we had this morning. Uh, the meeting was actually quite good, uh, it lasted longer than we had planned. Uh, but you know, when you talk about uh, governance structure and strategic planning, uh, there's a lot to, to talk about there. And one of the things that we had determined was that there's a lot that's changed since GTC, GTFCC has started. Um, and uh, for instance, the country support platform is a, is a major new uh, uh, you know, innovation in, in, innovation in uh, the task force. And so we uh, spent quite a bit of time actually thinking about uh, the fact that um, we probably uh, need a midterm review at this point. Uh, to look at the structures, the functions of the task force uh, and to really uh, uh, be able to determine whether or not the structure and function is, is um, on task uh, for the goals and objectives that we have for our task force. Um, so the uh, steering committee has tasked the secretariat uh, to come up with terms of reference uh, for a midterm review. Um, and so that will be presented to the steering committee in the future uh, to, de to determine exactly how and who would do a midterm review. Uh, so that is uh, one of the things that we dis discussed. Um, also, we discussed a, a few more tactical things having to do with our functions uh, within the task force. For instance, the independent review panel. Uh, we did talk about the fact that um, these country uh, uh, country control plans are rather extensive, and we're getting more of them, which is great, um, but we need some more capacity on the um, independent review panel. Uh, so we will be increasing the membership of the panel going forward and introducing a, a chair for each of those reviews uh, to take uh, a little bit of the heft off of the um, secretariat to, uh, in, in doing so. Um, there's also uh, an idea that uh, the country control plans probably need some quality control before they are uh, submitted to the independent, independent review panel. Um, so we uh, considered the country support platform to be the right uh, entity to do the quality control of the plans. As they're being developed, there can be interim feedback uh, on the plans. Obviously, there's in some countries, there's some, some uh, support from the country support platform for plan development, uh, but that that uh, task would be uh, covered by the uh, country support platform. And when the plans are then ready, they would be submitted for independent review uh, by the independent review panel. So the other thing that we talked about um, was uh, the fact that uh, in our steering committee, uh, we have a number of uh, representatives from countries. Uh, in a previous um, uh, committee meeting, we had determined that the chair of the committee would be a separate function from the rep uh, then representation from a country because Fru is from South Africa. He had done both before. We're going to separate that out so that there is more representation uh, from the countries, and so we'll we've asked uh, again the uh, Secretariat to propose now since we're um, separating those two uh, types of roles a third country representative uh, using the criteria that we have uh, to uh, then have um, a uh, country uh, an additional country representative on the steering committee um, we also uh, reviewed the IMST and WHO support uh, that uh, was really, I think, critical uh, that Mike Ryan and his team at WHE and WHO uh, stood up um, and what the interaction has been uh, between the uh, task force and the IMST. Uh, and 
I think it's functioned quite well, um, and the incident manager for the IMST has worked closely uh, with Philippe, for instance, uh, and they have actually increased some of the capacity for surveillance and data management and so forth that we can be take take advantage of in in the in the future. Uh, ask, asking him directly, the IMST is. Um, is, is active and will remain active for the time being, depending upon the situation of the cholera outbreaks globally. Uh, so that support will continue. Uh, the other thing that we talked about was um, the fact that we've had some advocacy events, uh, specifically at the World Health Assembly, um, and we've had these uh, side events in, in coordination with the um, World Health Assembly in the past. and. What we decided is that we will continue to do that on every two years, biannually, to have one of these side events. And in the intervening year, uh, we will have alternative events at a regional level or even at another sector event or something like that to be, de be, ter be determined at the time. Uh, there was actually quite a lot of um, support for regional uh, uh, events uh, that we could uh, bring together uh, partners in, in that in that context. So the last thing I will mention um, is that people may know that the steering committee um, did bring together um, uh, an OCV temporary commission uh, to look at the supply and demand um, of OCV, uh, and we did a, a an update of what the commission has uh, uh, been able to uh, discuss so far. Um, and what we decided as a steering committee was that the recommendations that they are coming up with now uh, need to have uh, actual action plans and, act and uh, the, you know, which partners or wh which people would be responsible for the action items uh, according to their recommendations. Um, so we anticipate that the actual uh, report from the OCV Commission will be available in uh, uh, probably early fall, um, a after some of the um, uh, negotiations are taking place having to do with contracts and tender. So that's uh, a uh, report out on what we had covered this morning, uh, but I'm willing to take any questions you have and probably also in invite uh, other of the steering committee members to make any comments. Okay, so first of all, uh, thank you very much, Chris, uh, for uh, taking, uh, and not trying, but managing very well uh, the chairmanship of the steering committee, which is not always uh, an easy job, uh, but that was a very, very good discussion today. So, um, you know, this past three days for me has been, uh, for, and I, I hope for all of you, have been extremely rich uh, in many aspects, okay? so. Uh, we are midway uh, from the launch uh, and the uh, the end of the uh, of the roadmap, huh? so uh, it's seven years to go. Uh, there are a lot of challenges, and uh, including new challenge, uh, more country being affected, new country being reaffected, uh, climate change impact, uh, shortage of uh, multiple uh, commodity for containing cholera, including for treatment, diagnosis, uh, and vaccination. So, but at the same time, there are a lot of successes. And I think it's, it's important at this point of time also to really highlight also the successes uh, uh, or success. Uh, I never know with the English if you have to uh, make, put it in plural or not this words. But anyway, success, there are a lot of them. <laughs> and I think it's important to, uh, to not forget that. So. Um, the the um, I think it's a, it's a very important step that was uh, you know uh, taken by the steering committee also to have uh, uh, you know this this thinking about having a uh, a midterm review of where are we what should be the next priority uh, where to go next to to be able to reach the the, the roadmap objective 
So don't think that anybody disagrees with the ultimate goal, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, reduction of uh, lethality, uh, of, of case fatality rate, of uh, uh, prevention of large outbreak, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I think everybody agree with that. I uh, would be very surprised to have disagreement. The problem is where and how do we reach that? So... Um, so again, so that's that's a very important point, and on the months to come and uh, uh, and toward the next year, uh, you know, we will we will have uh, much more to uh, to continue discuss. The point uh, is Wilfried. I mean, I I agree with you, Wilfried, and I think it's a good uh, opportunity for WHO to also take a much more role, including at the country level, uh, you know, and and to, for all the partners to make uh, to take this chair on on uh, on, the, on the steering on the implementation of the global roadmap and as an active actor of the GTHCC. I also want to conclude with what Jerome was saying that you know the GTFCC is a partnership and it's not a WHO owned, it's a WHO hosted. And the role of partner are extremely important. Without I mean the GTFCC, and for me it's not word, it's really the reality. Huh? It's you, including us, but it's you. Uh, uh, we are just uh, and it's not a limiting factor, but we are uh, the secretariat and uh, we are not the GTFCC. So we can only achieve uh, success uh, only all together. Uh, I think it's it's an opportunity also uh, because you know we all know huh, uh, at the end of the day everything is about money as well. Huh? So uh, uh, to thank also the donor that have supported uh, you know the the, uh, the GTFCC, Gavi in the provision of vaccine and operational cost. Gates for the Secretariat and other activity, SDC, uh, the Swiss Corporation, with the Welcome Trust uh, for uh, supporting the research agenda, CDC for uh, many activity, but also in very actively supporting, you know, the response to cholera outbreak that make a big difference in both supporting the MST, but also provision of supply to country. So, uh, so, so that's that's really important uh, important for for us, and I think it's uh, it's important to underline. Uh, it's also for me. I mean, with my GTFCC cap and not with the WHO one, but I think you know the, the uh, it took a, it took a while, but the uh, IMST has made a big difference for us. Uh, there is still a lot of work, but I mean, you know, what we have been able to achieve with the IMST and the way you know it was uh, uh, requested by my client to be uh, to be functioning it's really the way it works uh, the IMST is supporting the cholera program it's uh, joining effort with partner and including with unicef and uh, with the joint uh, approach with similar system within unicef but also with other partner including msf in terms of where we're sending the supply avoiding stupid competition about you know uh, the the you know buying uh, you know uh, IV fluid when they are available. So, I mean, you know, these are things that are not necessarily really, uh, visible, but are extremely important, uh, you know, for, for, you know, this uh, underground discussion between uh, UNICEF, MSF, uh, uh, and WHO for making sure that the supply go where they are most needed uh, and not necessarily when they are the most visible. So, uh, visible in terms of, yeah, you, you we all know uh, the world. Huh? There are some, some countries that will eat the front line and others that uh, <laughs> will stay uh, unnoticed because uh, you know, they are not politically uh, uh, or economically attracting. So, um, uh, again, so the, the, uh, of course, we will look uh, forward to your feedback and uh, you know, there will be some evaluation done uh, at the end of the meeting. We really expect you to feel this and as honestly as possible. I mean, you know, it's always a learning process. We are always uh, looking forward to uh, to improve the thing as much as possible. So getting your feedback on, you know, what was efficient, what worked, what did not work, what could we improve would be really, really uh, useful also for the next edition. Uh, it's also an opportunity for me to thank the whole cholera team uh, and the GTFCC secretariat. So, I mean, uh, starting by Marion, uh, you know, with, with
uh, without who, uh, who uh, you know, a lot of things would not be moving uh, uh, as, uh, as well. And uh, it's a good opportunity. I know that you still have a month. You still owe me a month. But <laughs> Uh, uh, you will be away for a well-deserved break in the coming in the coming uh, six months. So uh, enjoy this period and uh, another type of break. Well, yeah, I, exactly. Not a cholera. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you will be so happy to come back after the break and changing the nappies, etc., to come back to cholera. So, uh, in, okay, there's still a month to go, but I'm sure that, you know, many people would like to join me in, uh, you know, in, uh, in wishing you the very best for this break and to enjoy this time and to, uh, you know, to do something else that just cholera. But um, uh, also to thank really very warmly all the, the technical focal points that are doing most of the... Uh, unnoticed work uh, you know so there is a lot of things that are going behind the scene uh, so uh, I'm sure I'm going to forget people but uh, Nadia uh, Laurent uh, Malika who is in break uh, Morgan um, Kate uh, and Francine uh, our assistant with uh, uh, you know with uh, and Natalie, okay, Natalie, uh, who was, uh, I was sure I was going to, uh, to triple on the carpet. So uh, Natalie has been really instrumental in, uh, in developing all the, the products that you have seen, you know, the, the, the C-traps, they are working very closely uh, with the, uh, the IMST to be able to, uh, to collect and share the data. To thank the... Uh, uh, the, um, the, the chair of the working group and the member of the working group because all of the things that have been developed, the new guidance, you know, all the work, and I think it has been massive work done in surveillance in the past uh, one year and a half, both in the AP and the lab, uh, that have been really being turbo boosted by, uh, by the, the need uh, to, to initiate, to, uh, to release this kind of draft, uh, not, not draft, interim guidance, uh, much faster than planned because of the outbreak. So, I mean, I know, but I think you know uh, that this has taken much more work from both the technical focal point, but the chair and the working group to achieve this kind of thing. So we really need to thank all of you for that. Uh, and we know that there is much more uh, that will come, but you, thank you very much for that. So, and last but not the least, uh, to thank uh, Merieu, not just as, uh, as hosting us, but as being a very long and supporting partner uh, in many different, uh, in different uh, option and uh, not option. Occasion uh, and uh, work, uh, you know contribution in different working group and uh, etc. Hein? Valentina, uh, don't pretend that you're not here. I know you are. <laughs> Uh, but also to thank Merieux Foundation, uh, you know, for hosting us here, Les Pensières, uh, Matteo, uh, without you, uh, we cannot do anything. Uh, comment il s'appelle Jean, l'interprète, mais c'est quoi son prénom Jean-Luc et l'équipe uh, for the interpretation. Again, for me, this is very important. We have heard that for many people. Uh, having this capacity to have the French translation makes also the exchange much more lively and, uh, you know, and I like to remind it, but if we compare the number of country, not the population, but the country, there are more French-speaking country in the GTFCC uh, priority list than Anglophone country. So, uh, so this is important also to make a, a, a space. It's not just a question of language, it's a question for people to be able to express themselves in a lang language they master and to be able to convey the message in the way they want. So thank you very much, Jean-Luc, and your, and your team. Okay. Ah. And last, Mark, Mark, okay, because, you know, uh, Mark Noon is, uh, you know, has been uh, working with us for a long time, so... Uh, uh, no, but, you know, so uh, if there is anybody to blame about the minutes, the uh, posting, etc. 
I'm joking, of course. So, I mean, the fact that he's coming back every year, it's, uh, it's a good sign, isn't it? So uh, thank you very much for, uh, for the work that will, uh, uh, that and uh, the uh, being, keeping track of what we have been discussing. So thanks again for making it to Geneva. Uh, thanks, sorry for the one who could not make it because of visa issue. And we know that, uh, you know, it's getting uh, increasingly complicated. So we need to find a solution and possibly, yeah, uh, for, for other uh, things. But so thank you for the one who are here. Thank you for the one who have been attending to the meeting. And I think it's almost double huh? uh, the number of people. Matteo, you can say how much people have been in uh, attending the uh, the virtual session and uh, looking forward to see you next year.